Hi. Welcome back to the Cross Border Interview Podcast. Today's guest is Calgary Mayoral Candidate Shaoli Wong. Shaoli, thank you so much for doing this. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much, Chris, for <clears throat> interviewing me. Thank you. Um, my first question to all the mayoral candidates that I have on is the same one that I'll be asking you. Where does your sense of duty to serve come from? It's... Uh... <laughs> Uh, I didn't think of uh, politics uh, actually in my life most of the most of the time. I began to feel the responsibility or liability uh, since about two years ago. And what happened yeah, two years ago? Uh, yeah, that's during our, our last uh, federal election. And what, what about that did, made the decision for duty to serve in politics a little bit easier? Because you ran federally in the riding of Calgary Rocky Ridge, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. <clears throat> so what, what, uh, what, where, did your, where did your like of politics and why did you want to give back in the sense of politics? It's... Uh, you know what? It's... Uh, my my experience is uh I will say um uh, you know quite hard to explain. I have in my life experienced many met with many life saving angels. Many times. You know what? I got a very severe rheumatoid arthritis when I was uh in school. And I got a friend who helped me fix that. Yeah. I got a serious uh, myocarditis, jaw injury, lower back injury, back injury. And I got all the doctors say, there's no cure. You have to suffer what you are suffering. If you're lucky, your injury is not going to go worse so quickly. But uh, I got most of my injury fixed. And uh, most of them are not doctors. Most of them I don't even know before. They just reached me, offered me their their help, and I got those my problem fixed or largely fixed. It's uh, quite in, impressive, and I have several of them right here in Calgary. Oh wow! Several of them, and you know what? When all those things goes through, and you feel you can't. You can't simply offer your help back to your angels. They don't need your help, that help, and you don't have, you don't usually got a chance to help people. Literally, I volunteered a lot years ago when I was healthy. We didn't have, I didn't have those injury, but uh, you don't feel you seriously you helped people one way or the other. But after all those things, I feel I have a. You know, there's a reason why I got helped by that many angels in my life. So I was helped for a reason. So I need to do something back to the society. So one way that you're doing something to give back to those angels is you're running for mayor, uh, count, uh, the mayor of Calgary in the 2021 municipal elections. What was the decision based on? Was it just to give back to those who had helped you? Or was there a pressing issue within uh, City Hall Council that you wanted to address? Yes. <clears throat> That's uh, because when I feel I was so blessed to, to, to be helped by so many angels, and I believe I bear a burden to help, to help back. So I, you know, I kind of feel, I, I didn't have the, the confidence to help people like uh, as a politician. But uh, when I feel, I feel the burden to help people, that makes things very differently. So I feel, why not? I, we, we complain about our politicians, our leaders, federal, municipal, uh, federal, provincial all the time. I said, why, why should I, why? Why shouldn't I do a little better? So I ran <clears throat> the federal election. I checked with all those federal parties. 
I talked even with uh, a major party's leader face to face, but I can't endorse anyone, so I ran as a independent. At that time, my focus was, was uh, property tax. I was thinking of uh, hopefully federally they can set a cap upon the municipal property tax rate because the municipal was doing whatever they like. I don't think that is that is uh, they should have that much authority. And also, I know so many seniors. I have many local friends, uh, seniors, and I know they with a fixed income, they were hurt really badly by inflation, by property tax, and they need instant help. So also our judicial system, those things, and uh, also federal budget. And uh, after that election, the 2019, a week later, I got there's a town hall in City Hall that was about a fluoridation. You know that issue, right? Yeah. So I went yeah. to that fluoridation issue. I, I did a presentation. I raised the child rights and freedom questions. And uh, they can't even answer. The full panel of five got defeated. And uh, I believe I helped to stop that fluoridation at that moment. And then 2020, it's, it's all about the pandemic. <laughs> so everyone was uh, distracted, distracted from um, everything else, that's pandemic. But I didn't expect at the end of last year, <clears throat> the news that really hurt me, that's uh, our local news scene, 11% of our residents can't pay their 2020 property tax. That's, uh, yeah, when I heard that news, I was really shocked. I know people are struggling, struggling, but uh, I don't expect uh, that many people are suffering that much at the time. You have- then it comes, uh, Go ahead, oh, continue. Oh. I apologize. Yeah. Then that's uh, our mayor's comments really, really annoyed me. He was saying, I'm not that much worried about it. I can't believe it. As a citizen, I was seriously worried about that 11% people. When they can't pay their property tax, Many of them will have a problem with their mortgage. And the mortgage company can't wait for over three months. And that's what happened. Last year I saw the news. Every time you check the you check the uh, uh you check the court cases, there's over two thousand families facing foreclosure by mortgage company. And even last month I have uh, one day I went to court. There are two families, two young families with young kids in school. They are asking the mortgage companies to give them a few more months for their kids to finish school for this semester. You know, that's, I can't even imagine their family's pain. They're so painful, but our mayor was seeing, he was not that much worried. And, and I didn't hear any city council say they were worried. So you, that's a scary part. So uh, that's that's the moment I decided to run the mayor election, specifically against uh, our mayor. You have opened you you you've you've laid out a few things that I want to dive into because um, I, I've I've gone to your website and for my listeners and to my viewers, the link to Shaolin's website uh, will be in the uh, show notes as well. So please go and visit them. But the one I want to talk to you about is lowering, uh, so I just want to make sure, dropping residential property taxes by 15% by 2023, 23.5% by 2025. And that is from the 2019 level. So that's pre-pandemic level. How do you how do you justify doing that when we have inflation, cost of doing business is going up? So what will you be looking at to potentially cut from services or potentially from city hall to ensure that you can pass those savings on to residents who are struggling right now, like those two families that you mentioned. 
Yeah, so yeah, that's a great question. I always want to answer or to chat with people. So to answer those questions, there's a there are there are a few background issues we need to fix first. I call them fallacy. So uh, so let me explain a few serious fallacies hanging around in our town this, the last few years. The first fallacy is uh, we have many city officials, city councils, and most of city councils and mayor, and most of uh, of candidates this in this election, over 80% of the year, they were they opposed to tax. I mean, probably all of them oppose, but our MC is over 80%, they oppose the tax increase, but while in the same time, they support every major project <clears throat> of the city, either the Green Line, Arena, downtown conversions, those, those projects, or that uh, guidebook. Those issues, they support everything, and some even say there's no way we can cut tax. And I will say this is uh, the fallacy possessed by our mayor for all these years. You know what? We voted against the 2026 Winter Olympic bid. It's not because we don't like it. Calgary is a young city. A lot of people are younger. We're a younger people city. We like Olympic, <clears throat> and we had Olympic before. Many young guys, they want, we want to have our own Olympic right here. But the problem is we can't afford it. We were in the recession already. And uh, you know, all, for all gas recession, yeah, it's, uh, the cycle can be very long, and you may never got another oil boom, even in 10 years. So we know that's a reality. Not everyone in Canada feel our pain or feel our challenge here. But our mayor was here saying, no, we want an Olympic and this it's a, he's at the whole city hall, most of them were chasing that. At least they chased that, you know what? They ignore the majority of us. They said they listen to people, but you know it's proven they didn't listen. They didn't even dare to offer a <clears throat> abandoned plebiscite. Remember that? Yeah. That uh, non banding plebiscite was uh, forced by our provincial government because provincial government see the danger, the risk. And for the IRTs, I don't. It's not people don't like IRT. There's a whole lot of people have concerns or even against Green Line. I'm a strongly 100% against Green Line, not because I don't like it. I take IRT every day, but we can't afford it. It's not because of uh, I can't afford it. I, I can't afford it, maybe. It doesn't matter. It's not because of me. If only me can't afford it, if with the green line, I go, I will go homeless. I can't even complain because I failed. But most people can't afford that already. We have uh, over 55,000 families can't afford their property tax. And over 500 can't even afford their three year property tax. They were listed on the city's uh, uh, tax set in, on May 31st already. Many of them were pushed to sell their house. 20% under the market price, price simply because their house was listed for foreclosure. So I never seen our city's city council or mayor raise any concern about those 500 family or those 55,000 family. So that's a serious issue. You can't talk about a beautiful future for whatever, for attracting people to Calgary, but uh, you're not talking about people living in Calgary. So that's a, that's an issue. They never talk about the people moving out of Calgary. I know people moving out. I have neighbors moving out. I talked with people and this, they were, they were happily told me they are leaving. So whatever happened here, not their concern. 
So that's a scary. That's a scary. We didn't hear about that even two years or three years before. So that's a so that's a fallacy. And another fallacy I will have to say is a uh, is a tax increase or service cut. Yeah, all, all mayor and several council was repeating that all the time. They were saying oh, we have to raise the t increase the tax because of population, because of the inflation, uh, and we have to increase tax. Otherwise, we can't even keep our service level. Sounds okay, but not really, because when population rise, yeah, tax rate increase, but it doesn't mean per capita property tax should increase, right? And there's the inflation. Yes, inflation means everything cost goes up higher, but it also means the average salary goes up, right? And it may may not be exact the same, but pretty much it goes up with each other. So, so if there's inflation, and if you talk about inflation, so you should keep a tax, property tax increase, I would say per capita property tax increase, you keep that with uh, inflation. But they didn't. So one of the so, areas that the next council, if you were the successful candidate on October 18th, if uh, you were the next successful candidate for mayor, one of the areas that you're going to have to be looking at is that non-residential property taxes. We have vacancies downtown Calgary that is eating into the bottom line of Calgary's budget uh, because A, they're not paying taxes because there's no no businesses in the downtown core. So they're sitting vacant. So therefore, we're not making money off of it. How do you see yourself attracting new businesses to the city of Calgary to ensure that the property taxes for residential uh, properties goes down like you want, but we offset that by the increase of business uh, non-residential property taxes as well. So, uh, so that, that topic, and we we have a we have a, another fallacy buried in that topic. Uh, we may not be aware, but uh, we got that fallacy in mind already. That was implanted by the city hall. That means they will mean we have this city hall here. We have the city. We have this. Um, we need to spend that much money, and uh, whoever failed to pay, the other have to share the burden. So that is wrong. It's like uh, the city is our city. We hired the city to build the road, build the bridge, provide the utilities and safety is for us. It's not. The city was there and they offered us. No, that's we hired them. So it's like you hired a contract uh, yeah, for your house renovation. You pay them, you request them, you ask whatever you want. Not the contract say, oh, I need 50,000. You have to pay that much. You offer me a 10,000 project, forget it. Yeah, I'm a contract and I do 50,000 renovation anyway. And you have to keep that year after year, each every time. So in our cities, yeah, we are, when people suffer, the city should feel the pain because we are the taxpayer is actually the master. We are the master, we hired you and you are actually the servant. You forgot your position. You are the servant. You are not the boss. We are the boss. So now we are in trouble. We can't pay you that much more. And you need to keep your, our essential service. But what the city is doing, yeah, they, they try to distract people from uh, the real issue. You know what? Uh, <clears throat> We got uh, that uh, economic downturn since late 2014. But in 2015, 16, 17, 18, they keep hiring people. They hired over a thousand staff. Over a thousand staff. 
But they shouldn't even city, do that. Isn't our city growing? Doesn't doesn't demand for more staff with a city that's growing with new subdivisions popping up need to happen? Or are you saying that you need to look where the money is being spent and it doesn't always have to be spent at, on administration? Yeah, uh, I, I give you the number here. Uh, uh, first of the mayor. So from a, uh, I have the data from uh, 1998 to 2019. That's before the pandemic. So they can't use pandemic as a excuse. Since that time, you know, the inflation, inflation was uh, 32%, but our mayor got 83% pay increase. That means his salary plus uh, benefits. 83%, 51% higher than inflation. Our city council got a 102% increase. That's a 70% higher than inflation. And our city's employee, I mean city's average employee, that's they got a 64% increase. That's a 32% higher than inflation. Okay. And also city staff. City staff got a 80% higher than population increase. 8%, uh, 8%, 8% higher than, than population increase. And what that means, the city got a city staff level increased quicker than population. And their pay, I mean, the city staff average pay, 32% higher than inflation. In inflation was 32, they got 64. That means with, a, with that means with a, with a certain amount of population, like you and I mean, yeah, we are paying more money, we are paying more to the city staff. They got more staff, right? For yeah. two of us. And each of them got a more pay, increased pay, uh, more pay than inflation. So we pay more than inflation increase. So with the same service, we are paying them 32% more for their increase, for their salary. Increase. I mean, thirty-two percent more than inflation, and eight percent more for the more staffing. So that means that is the actual cost we got. Should we keep that the same level? Like, uh, if a population population we can take that out by per per capita tax tax tax, right? Yeah. If a per capita tax keeps increase as the inflation level. We all tax shouldn't be this high. This, yeah, that's, that, I have all the number here. That's uh, before the inflation. You know, this, uh, for all. One of the areas that on your website uh, for the issues that you'd like to see adjust if you were the successful candidate on October 18th is you would roll back that salary. You would roll back the mayor's pay by 20% of the 2019 level. Is that enough? Do you wish, do, are you hoping that you can get counselors on board to do the same? Are you hoping to get administration on to do the same? Because like you said, if these people are getting 83%, 70%, 8% over what the population is getting for inflation wise, do you think that not only the mayor, but the mayor should lead by example, should be rolling back their salaries, but counselors and also their administration as well? Yeah, that's, this, is, this is a really great question. And I like the way you ask the question. Because there are many candidates who are taking the position, say, I'm going to offer the salary card. I'm going to request the others. That is not real. When you say, when a public servant, when they say, I'm going to do something, but I didn't know 
that he didn't even have that authority to do, to do that. Oh, that may not even be legal. So that make it that promise a lie. If you if you don't know if you can do that, that's a lie. You have to be aware if it's legal, if you are authorized to do that, and if it's logical and ethical. So if you have confidence to persuade the others, right? That's that's a that's a you know what that's a, that means a position doesn't mean really much as a as a leader. All public member, we can take a position whatever we like, because we don't have a response, we don't have a much liability. All liability is pay, is to pay the tax. We can't affect any other. We take our own position. That's our charter rights. But as a as a leader, as a public servant, you can't simply take a position. We do have city councils. They take position same as most majority of the citizens. Yeah, most people, many people like them. But uh, I take that uh, to another level. You take a position, same as me, but doesn't mean you deserve to be our leader. Because you, if you failed to persuade anyone, you don't have the logic to persuade anyone. It doesn't mean anything because every other one have the legal rights to take their position against you. And you can't simply blame me, blame them. Yeah. We don't need blame. We have we are blaming our leaders all the time. So as a leader, you need to be persuasive. So for for me, I take that position. I said clearly, I'm gonna rule back 20%. I know 20% is not enough, as I told you. It's not about the last few. Nancy during his term, he didn't increase his pay that much. He in increased only by eight some percent, lower than inflation. It's his predecessor increased the salary, increased the mayor's pay too much. That's before Nancy. That make his pay that high. So I don't blame him at that point. But to me, I know you can't just, uh, you can't, you can't assume you deserve the increase offered by your predecessor because your predecessor increased that too much. So then from my point of view, I believe 20% is not enough. I, the mayor's pay to deserve to cut more than that. But because I don't have the authority, I don't have the legal rights to request other city councils to cut their pay. But uh, I would encourage them. I would explain to them, like uh, I told you those numbers, yeah. you got a 102% increase, 70% higher than the inflation for that 22 years. So I believe your pay is a little too high, at least compared with uh, 19, 1998. So I would encourage them to cut whatever they like. I would believe some may not take a cut. Some may be last term, they prepare for re retirement. They doesn't care about sex next term, whatever they feel. And they, they, are, they may be the only, uh, the only family member employed, right? Never know their personal issues. So if they take a position, they are not doing the card, but at least I hope they can be aware they got paid a little too much, specifically because most of the Calgarians are suffering at this time, we're in crisis. So my position is I will take the card, but I can't cut too much. Because if you cut too much, you put too much pressure on the other staff, on the other city councils. Yeah. So like if I take, I cut 60%, my pay will be lower and, than any of you guys. So make you guys feel bad. That's not respectful. I would like to see my mayor's pay is still higher than the city council's pay. So I have no excuse to see I buy less liabilities than other city councils. So that's what I mean, that's a position. But what I do, the, the mayor's job is not for pay or not. It's you need to do the job. If you can do a little better, you can save hundreds of millions. You can use some hundreds of millions 
more properly to the people in need, to our service in need. So that works a lot. Calgarians are not that dumb to say, or oh, simply go, we pay you less, we love you. No, we're not going to say that. But still, in the same time, like I showed in my website, that's a number. That's all from a city's uh, annual report, some from a federal and a provincial government's website. The number may not be 100% accurately, but uh, statistically, that's reliable. A city have all the information, detailed information about that. So I will say, because of that, like your, your, your question say, how can I say I'm going to cut property tax low back by 15%? and uh, non-property 20% is because we overtax people a lot more than that. And I can't go there back and say, oh, simply because we like cities per capita, um, per capita residential property tax, we increased by 129%. And that's, uh, that's 97, 97% higher than inflation. I will cut them all that back. No, you just can't cut that, that back. You just can't cut city staff's salary because they increased 32% over inflation. You just cut that all back. You just can't do that because they are all people. Yeah. They are all people. And like uh, they are overweighted. You just go cut their limbs. You just can't do that. You, you tell them it's not healthy. We can't afford that. Do some weight, cut some fat, right? Slowly. Because you need to treat our city staff as our categories. They are not our country. They are not our enemy. They are all people. Yeah, we, we are not, I'm not going, because they didn't, they didn't steal our money. They take the pay, they take the increase legally. Right? Legally. They were offered. And they worked hard for that many years. And you, you can't just, Say you did that illegal. You are a criminal. You are a thief. You are a thief, right? I'm gonna take that back. Things doesn't work that way. No, it but doesn't. It, Go yeah. ahead. Yeah, because we got that much increase there, and what happened is uh, because the last, especially the last ten years, our city was taking that as granted. Whatever we're gonna do, you pay. They always say, oh, an extra, extra 1% property tax rate increase, they're going to get some uh, tens of millions, right? And they can have some beautiful project for all of us. So that is wrong. We are here not for your project. Those projects, including our city council, you are there for us. So you ask what we want. Not you, what you want. And also, I want to mention why it's, uh, I just noticed, noticed that yesterday. You now we have this uh, Greenland committee. The committee chair is Ward 12 city council. Mm-hmm. Vice chair is Ward 3 city council. You know, I think that uh, there's a conflict of interest because they have direct interest of this uh, green land. The, the green land go to their communities specifically. So there's a conflict of interest. You have too much interest, conflict, too much personal interest, all your world is res, uh, interest. That may misleading you. That may, I mean, that mean, legally that means you shouldn't take that job because that is like, uh, there's another issue. It's like uh, our city council, we were voted by a ward. It's, I call that GDR lessons. That's a graduate driver's lessons. You, you got to do route test under 50 kilometers per hour. But as soon as you got that lessons, you drive to Edmonton, right? Yeah. So that's kind of that. But people don't blame you, but you, you, you can't. As a city council, when you are campaigning for your, for your position, that is fine. You focus on your world. That's, that is, uh, you have all the rest to do that because that's what you, you should do. It's only those people in those world can, can vote for you. 
why should you talk about uh, other world's interest, right? But you know, when you got elected as a city council, you vote on every issue about the whole city. Yeah. So you can't simply focus on your world. When there's a specific issue about your world, you can't, you have all the rights to raise your world's voice. You have all the rights, but you don't chair that committee because there's a conflict of interest. Other world may not complain, but uh, you know you have a special interest for that. And uh, it's like the whole city is gonna fund for this green land. So your, your two world got a specific, special interest. Mm. And uh, you care more about, because you benefit more, you care more about that. That's understandable, but uh, you should avoid that. It's like uh, you are the you are the mayor, right? Yeah. And uh, your son is uh, applying for a city's job, and you interviewed him, right? You should avoid that. Yeah, the conflict of interest is one That's of the a biggest things. Interest. Yeah, That's not specifically right or wrong. It, you, yeah, it's not because we don't trust you, but uh, you should avoid that. And now another problem is because the Greenland is so costly and our city don't have a plan for that. They don't even have a plan. See how deep the tunnel is going to be. They don't know geologically engineering how tough those pebbles are going to be. That's the worst part. And uh, they don't even know. They don't even talk about that. And they don't even talk about uh, the full cost of the whole Greenland. They talk about the first stage only. But you don't expect the, the province, provincial government or federal government fund with us another billion for the rest of Greenland, right? So that burden will very likely be on us. And we can't afford that. As simple as that. And there are people saying, I know there are people living in World 12, World 3, some were seeing, or their city council at least. I heard mostly from the city council, or some of the candidates they were seeing, oh, we have a residents living here for decades. They were waiting for the green land for decades. They have everything ready, They're waiting for decades. Yes, but even when we started to build the green land today, you need to wait at least five years, right? Yeah. World three, probably eight, 10 years for the green land to go to your community. That means after 20 years, you have to wait another five, 10 years. And you see, you are seeing you can't wait. I don't understand. You, I have friends moved from uh, close to RRT to World 3 10 years ago. Yeah, everyone knows there's not going to be an RRT anytime soon. They chose to move there. What's the problem? There's no problem. If you want, if you don't drive, if you, if you don't like to take the bus, you can move to those communities close to RRT. You can move to there. House price is not that, that much higher along the RRT. Maybe a little higher, but not that much higher. You can't complain for that. And if you say you waited 20 years, you can't wait another five years. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, just a, it's just a little funny. So I ask people in those wardings, to wait another five years. I don't think we can't, we can't expect uh, Calgary's economy can go, can go much better within the next term. So I would ask people to say, not only we can't start this green land this year, we can't start in the next four year term for the next councils. So we don't need to talk about that issue. Doesn't matter how much, how many hundreds of millions of city already spent it on, spent on Greenland, we can't be keep, kidnapped. Is it spend that? Let it be. You spend 600 million, 700 million, let it be. But we don't have a 7 billion behind that. No, especially when, let you, it be. when we, you have, we can't afford that. especially when you have, like you said at the beginning, families who are struggling day to day to pay their property taxes, correct? Yes, even in 2019, I heard, I didn't see that in news. 
I can't confirm that. I heard every month there are 300, 300 people in Calgary go homeless every month. 2020 can be worse. This year can be even worse. And, yeah. and also, and that, that's another pain when, when, when I, when I said this, city council mayor talk about our homeless issue all the time, addiction issue all the time. They know mental health addiction are related to, uh, to financial issues. Very obvious. You got a million dollar, you will, you'll be very, very likely will, will not be stressed be addicted and no way to go homeless. But financial issue is uh, most is uh, most people's biggest problem. It can be the, the most common cause of, uh, of a mental health issue and even family issue. So they talk about a lot about that, but they ignore how people go homeless. You know, especially for those 536 families listed on tax sale this year, May 31st. Those are the families, most of them seniors. They don't own mortgage. If they own, if they didn't pay their mortgage, after three months, mortgage company will come. So they can't pay their property tax for three years. You can't. <laughs> you, you can't fail to pay your mortgage for three years. No, there's no way. Yeah. So the problem is those people, that means mortgage is not an issue. It's their property tax. They don't have a, they don't have the financial power. They can't, whatever family issue, they have another issue. But the city, the only thing city can do is don't overtax people with property tax. It's no, nobody asks you don't tax people, but you can't, you can't, like I say, between 2003 and 2019, city increased the property, municipal property tax 129%, 129%. Inflation is 32%. City increased the per capita, per capita. Municipal property tax, residential property tax by 129%. Business property tax, per business property tax, 103%. So you overtaxed people. Our mayor said many times we increased uh, our property tax much lower than inflation and uh, population increase. That's a huge lie. I can't wait to have a debate with our mayor. So you treat, you can't, you know, Another, another pain on myself, specifically, I'm running the election. We have many candidates this, in this election, but you don't expect anyone who owns city's property tax to run the election because they are not, they are not eligible because they own city's tax. They can't even run for election. So from those hundreds of our candidates, there's no voice for those people. So I chose to be the voice for those people who are not eligible to run the election, to tell people they can't afford the property tax. So that is another reason why most of the candidates, over 80% of our candidates support people's, support this uh, people, uh, city's uh, major project, the Green Line, because they don't feel the pain. Yeah, and they can probably pro they can very proudly tell people, "I'm okay with the tax increase." So that doesn't mean anything. That makes me feel painful, because we should always care our vulnerable people, our seniors with a fixed increase, fixed income, especially those uh, eighty years old. When they retired, or before they retire, they didn't expect their retirement can be like this today. 
No, and that's a good point. Um, but we are coming up to that 50 minute mark. And I do want to, I do have a few final questions before we do the final wrap up. So I'm going to give you two minutes. I want you to tell people who are listening, who are watching this, why should people vote for you? Why should people go into the ballot box on advance vote day and on election day and vote for Shelley Wang as the next Calgary mayor? So whenever you're ready, you have two minutes, go ahead. Yeah, thanks. So I make my position clear. We are in a serious crisis. It doesn't matter how the pandemic is gonna go. We are gonna be in the crisis for a little longer. So I don't expect any, we can come back to another economic boom anytime soon. So we can't afford this green line. Our city had a several serious fantasies hanging around for years. They believe you either increase, allow us to increase property tax or cut the services. That's a, that's a fantasy. And uh, there's a lot of people believe there's no way we can cut the city's uh, bureaucracy or their overstaffing or their pay that's a fantasy. Companies are doing that all the time. So, and also when you cut, you don't cut our frontline service. I will not cut our frontline service because that's what we need. That's what we paid for. And there's a lot of issue about the city's management pension, a golden pension or whatever. We don't have, I don't have those access for those exact data yet, but we know that's a serious issue. And another issue is our policing. We are paying our police much more than as we pay the police much more than the inflation increase in the last 20 years. I have the number there in my website, but they're not doing a good job. Especially people 40 some years old, about they know we don't feel like or respect our police like 20 years ago. That is the problem. We're paying them much more than population and uh, inflation adjusted pay, but they're not doing a good job. We need to push them to do a better job. But that doesn't mean you, can, you can't call that defund the police. I, I will call that a defamation label. So whenever anyone touches the police budget, people throw that label. That's uh, that is unfair. That's a uh, defamation. That's not defense. So I'm saying, police is all police. They need to do a better job. We want to have a police. We feel, we feel love. We feel respect. And I want to have the police feel proud of the, themselves as before. And I have a, my plan clearly said that I'm against the Greenland, against the arena against the city's guidebook. I have a reason for that. I didn't take my position lightly. I have a reason for that. And I also promised I'm gonna lower our property tax, non-residential property tax by a specific number. I have those data behind that. That's of the city's annual report. And we have to do that. Only when we lower the, our cost, and the lower our crime rate here, people will come. Companies will come. We don't need to, city, city's position is not a position to create jobs. You attract people here. You attract people here, you don't see, you don't simply by seeing that. You do your job, they will come. Companies know how to do their job. Entrepreneurs know how to do their job. You don't need to choose whoever you offer more service or pay or tax credit. You don't do that. When we lost our business projects from us downtown, let it be. Cut our bureaucracy. Let it be. You don't have other small businesses to share their burden and push them to close their business. That's the most stupid thing the whole city had done the last few years. So that means I take I take my position 
but I have clear logic and I know the law, I know I can't do that, I will walk my talk. Every my promise, I have a lot in my website. Every word means a word is a promise. And if I can't do anything of that, I can't, I quit. As simple as that. And also, I don't expect, oh, for the two-term issue, I want to mention that. I don't, I, I can't make, I will not make any promise beyond this term. So I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't believe I have the talent to be the mayor for over two terms. We have a whole lot of decent people out there. And the second is, I will not push any other city council to promise a two-term or three-term limit. They have their option. They have their legal rights. Thank you. For that. Um, Xiaoli Wang, thank you so much for doing this. To my listeners, to my uh, the viewers as well, um, links to Xiao Li's website, Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, email address are will be in the show notes. So uh, check it out. I highly recommend going, get involved, learn a little bit more about all the candidates and uh, get out and vote on October 18th. Uh, Xiao Li, thank you so much for doing this. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you for your great question so I can uh, share my my ideology with uh, the people. And uh, I believe Calgarians deserve a better city hall. The Cross Border Interview Podcast was produced and edited by Miranda Brown and Associate. 